And ADP came out with its jobs report just about 20 minutes ago. It estimated that companies hired 91,000 workers this month. For more, uh, we're joined from Boston by the Bloomberg Best on the overall economy, State Street Global Markets, uh, senior fixed income strategist John Herman. Also with me is economics editor Mike McKee and also uh, John Ehrlichman to talk about the markets and more on the data. But, uh, John, let me just get to you first because I think your estimate was 78,000 for ADP, right? So yes. this came above what... Uh, this came above your estimate. A little, little bit above. Okay, so but, uh, you know, over. What went so wrong? here's, I mean, here's the, yeah, I mean, here's the, here's the, here's the, the subtle uh, point in between in the lines. Uh, you know, when we looked at the report, uh, the survey, uh, the survey showed that on the services side, that there were eighty thousand uh, gain in services. Now, here's the key point: uh, Verizon workers who were striking were striking 45,000 striking over the reference week pay period so the labor department official I spoke with yesterday uh, suggested that th these workers would be impacting the payroll reports so the real question is okay. is the extent to which the ADP actually captured those 45,000 workers because they're largely going to show up in the service component. A few will show up in the construction component, but the overwhelming majority will show up in services. So it's really up to the ADP people to come forward and tell us whether or not their survey has captured those strikers. Mm. Well, we know that uh, actually they don't count those strikers. They, they're included because ADP, we've run into this before with ADP, they count you if you are listed as a paid employee, not whether you actually worked or not, which is the Labor Department definition. So ADP is going to be different from what we get on Friday from the Labor Department. And a lot of economists have already factored the Verizon strike into their estimates. Now, in John's defense, I also have to point out that 100,000 jobs is less than a tenth of a percent of the total number of people employed. So the difference between his estimate and what ADP came out with, right. you can't even measure it, John, here as close as anybody. That's true. Thank I mean, you. But go ahead, John. But, uh, but again, but Betty, again, you know, we factored it into our payroll estimate for Friday. We're at 52,000 overall for payrolls, and on the private side, we're at 59,000. Uh, you know, and we have incorporated what we think is a fair assessment of uh, of the striking workers. So, uh, you know, we're 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 below uh, the consensus numbers, and we're also below this ADP what ADP might guide. But so it's still a little bit tricky. Regardless of the striking workers or not, or counting that in or not, I mean, this report though seems like uh, it, it can largely be ignored by the markets, right? Uh, it can. And actually, you had Tom Fanning, who runs Southern Company, on earlier yes. in the show, a huge utility, and he said there are parts of the country that are creating jobs, the parts of the country that are not creating jobs are those still hard hit by the housing market. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got an unemployment rate of 9.1 percent. That's the expectation that we'll get that again this Friday. There are only two states where the unemployment rate is above 12 percent. That's California and Nevada. There are 31 states that have an unemployment rate below the national average. Uh, right. And, and well, I mean, to, look, to look at the unemployment rate a little bit, I mean, uh, our forecast is for Friday, we're at 9.2 percent, so we're a little above the street in terms of the unemployment rate. Uh, what we're concerned is that over, over the past seven months of the year, we've actually seen workers either, disgruntled workers either exit the workforce or the labor force, or we've seen new p prospective new entrants not enter the labor force. They've opted not to. So the question is for us on, on this Friday, if there's some type of catch-up adjustment where we get a, a, an increase in the labor force, and we think that will happen, and we think the majority of those workers will be documenting themselves as, as unemployed. But, right, but, but overall, I mean, it, yeah, just really quickly, John, I mean, the, the data that we're going to get on Friday and the data that we just got, uh, is any of it going to be able to tell you, though, overall, whether or not we're headed into a recession or what, you know, is it going to, is it going to be a make or break? You know, I think it'll only be make or break, I think, if, you know, you get a number that is, you know, close to zero or possibly negative, then I think that's really going to, uh, you know, excite worries about the near-term concern of the economy tipping into a recession. But right now, we continue to be very concerned about the first quarter growth, and that looks like to us the real soft pocket. Okay. John, thank you. John Herman, the Bloomberg Best. Thank you, Betty. From State Street Global Market.